Hi there, welcome to another edition of Bustanet. Today I'm going to be looking at my West Bromwich side. I uh, haven't been playing them very much. We have been focused entirely on making YouTube videos for people to understand tactics and stuff and I've been hopping between Atletico and West Brom. The last time I did play with West Brom was to use it for a 41221 as you can see on the screen here for Southern Buddy to explain to him uh, how you could set one up like this and we played it in the League Cup final match and beat Chelsea playing a bunch of uh, youngsters from the under 21 team. And here we have my West Brom team and I will be using the 4312 in case people are wondering why do I use fluid as a setup instead of anything else there's a technical reason behind it which is a bit complicated and there's a simple answer behind it I'm gonna go with the simple answer instead of the technical answer which talks about mentality splits you know and then we split them out with passing instructions I'm not gonna go there the simplest way to explain this is when you set team shape up if you go for highly structured your team is gonna be broken up into three distinct groups and these players will follow the instructions based on their group. And as you go all the way on to very fluid, the team starts to have a lot more creative freedom. They will play as one big happy family. This is, I don't recommend this a lot of time, although I know that this goes back to the uh, old days where we used to have the one mentality system for a whole team. But with the roles that you have in the, in the site, this time um, you could displace your tactic. One other reason why very fluid is um, plays a slightly differently is because of the creative freedom aspect of the game. Creative freedom goes um, goes up from highly structured all the way up to very fluid. Meaning, your highly structured team is not going to be very creative. Your very fluid team is going to be extremely creative. I like to use fluid. Fluid basically is nice. You know, you got a broad attacking and a defensive team they are all reasonably creative i don't need to mess with the creative freedom sliders after that there is no need to you know this is already quite fluid and if you're playing an attacking mentality trust me your creative freedom doesn't need to be adjusted if on the other hand you're playing something like a counter maybe you know you might want to for one or two select players but even then you know even on my counter systems i have never messed with it i've stuck with either fluid or structured and i've never ever done anything for any player to adjust it individually so i'm happy okay i'm back to my team instructions for my 4312 simple instructions i use work ball into box why simple cutbacks and less crosses i have shorties in my team i don't need deep freaking crosses they're never going to get them on their heads and if they do i'm happy uh, whip crosses because you know you want to drill the crosses across the face of the goal instead of um, you know a floater into the box. So I play usually play narrow because it helps with the shape that I have because the shape is naturally narrow, but I make it even more narrow, and then I make things even more interesting by employing complete wing backs, which actually add width. So I've got this narrow shape when I'm defending, but when I'm attacking, I have width. Uh, close arm more and stay on feet. When I'm in an attacking mentality, this is defaulted. I don't mess with this. I tell myself I'm always going to close down more when I'm attacking and then I employ a high block strategy with my front three which is close down much more via individual instructions. Now of course you know I love playing with the offside trap and prevent shot goal cup uh, distribution because that's the style of play I have. Okie dokie. So we're done with all that. Now I go to the slightly more detailed Things. If you saw the last video, you notice I put PIs into my place so I don't have to mess my tactics. Same thing here. I only have simple ones for the two guys at the back since you're playing attacking. I don't need them to launch balls. Eh? If they were counter-attacking, maybe I put more risky passes eh? or direct passes. When I go to midfield, nothing different here. I just want them to pass it short to the DLP. Who doesn't do anything different but he just plays his normal game. Up front, I've got an attacking midfielder who is instructed to dribble more a la Diablo. Why he will just you know, happily carry the ball in between these two guys when he needs to or just dribble laterally. He tackles hard and moves into channels. That's, that's, you know, that's the run up and down. Finally, we have the DLF on support. He tackles harder, moves into channels. Of course, you can untick this if you want if your player has moved into channels as a PPM, but I'm lazy. Gino tackle hard and close down much more. He's the F9. Um, he plays on this position most of the time with Perkovic here. Although there have been times when I forget 
and then suddenly Perkovic's goals, you know, they dry up. Then I remember, you know, he's supposed to be on one side or the other side. I have not played this game for a while, so I have absolutely no clue where Perkovic is supposed to be playing. So let's go back to a game he probably played in against Reading. Do, 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 do. Was this your boom? He didn't play. Callum Keeley played, so let's try West Ham. Aha, uh -huh, he did play. Let's look at the formation. Where did Monsieur Pekovic? Mr. Pekovic was playing as an F9. Ooh la la. Okay. Let's make sure that uh, you know I have this bad problem. Memory is going at my age. So let's go at all the 6 0 hammering against Arsenal. Pekovic must have played. Let's look at the formation again. Where did Monsieur Pekovic play? He played on the right, so he played on the right. Of course, Sergio Roberto is not with the side anymore. If you look at me, I have two ball winning midfielders and two complete wing backs with against this system. 4-5-1, I actually went wide because they are really wide. So I had to play wide against them and we absolutely hammered them. Nothing feels good than getting one over on the Gunners. It's really interesting if you look at the results in the league right now. It may be... 2024. But look at who's second in the league. Stoke. Don't mess with Stoke. You got Chelsea there. Chelsea always there. Arsenal, yeah, they're always there. But look at United. We've lost seven games this season. And then look at Liverpool. They actually flirted with relegation for the better half of this better part of the season. Okay, we have a 4-1-4-1 that they're playing. We just designed a 4-1-4-1. Hopefully they don't play with a mid-round. Okay, not good. Time to look at the juniors again. This is uh, not good. Gauchino, Moreno, Gauchino, you are... Uh, Moreno will play on the right of Gauchino. Uh, Pinola, Slavchev, Salas, Kristik. Now, I usually play Kristik on the left because he's really good at tackling. He's getting old as well. Yeah, got a whole bunch of players. Either suspended or injured. So these are my players. Robledo is a good player. I'll keep him. He's a much better tackler than Luke Garbett, but I think I want to save uh, Robledo for the match against Chelsea. Pino Pinada, my Pinada, my Pinada. My Pinada will chill out, smoke a cigar, and enjoy himself on the bench. So basically, that's it. I've got another 21 here, another 21 here, and another 21 here. The rest of my team is out injured. That is so disappointing. Unavailable. Let's see who's unavailable. Yep, Romero is suspended because he picked up five yellow cards already this season. Marco Perkovic is uh, injured. He is my top scorer and he can't play. He shall be injured for a while, four to five weeks. I need to hire a female masseuse and maybe he might be inspired to return to form. Uh, more so that's the team I have set up not a lot of choices I don't have a lot of depth I'm taking a big risk this season I don't have a lot of depth in the side it's not something I like to see but um, yeah should fix it at the close of the season so here we have Sisto on the right flank he's gonna be no, he's gonna be playing as a winger support so I should see him linking up with Lukaku Lukaku is gonna be really dangerous up front uh, we've got a uh, Boya who's going to be supporting. He's going to be making these runs into the box. Uh, if you're playing, they're playing with a defensive winger. Yeah, I have this skin. It's so nice. I'm not going to use any OIs in this match. Let's just... Uh, we've been on good runs, so go out there and impress me, boys. Let's switch over to key highlights. Camera will be... Camera will definitely be... 2D because I have not played this game in ages. Let's look at the director and not reverse. Let's start the match. Hopefully, we keep our run going. Immediately, Sisto impresses me with his pace. I will make one change. Silvio has picked up a knock. That is not something I like to see 
Okay, maybe we'll hold on to the change for a while longer. Sisto just made me very nervous charging down the um, right flank. I can make one change to my system and I will do that because he's linking up oh, with um, Roman Lukaku and if I allow him the space, I could pay the price. Nathan playing a beautiful ball out wide to mix Uraka Moreno. Oh, it hits the upright. I can't believe it. It hits the... Oh my god, it hit the upright. I can't believe... We... I can't believe the upright just saved Brighton. Come on, boys. Make it 251. This is probably the first time I've had... Perkovic injured. I mean, for this duration, four to five weeks. Nathan is my Balloon Dio winner, winner, and um, I have high hopes for him. I don't think we're going to pick up the Balloon Dio this season. I'm going to try something out very soon. Um, probably, if I have time for another save. But my goal is to create a hundred goal striker. Oh, come on, boys! You can get the ball in the net. Alright, we are going to do something slightly different now. We are not going to play with a narrow setup. We're going to go wider. And Gauchina scores. The boy has done wonders. I love this boy. He is a teenager. Brought into my side. He's already in the Brazilian team. Because I'm the Brazilian manager, I bring him in. Nothing less... Nothing better than having a national manager in your club team who loves the player. Well, Romelu Lukaku is still quiet and um, let's look at their ratings. Brighton stats. Lukaku is still at 6.8, so I'm happy. Sisto is 6.7, so he's not he's playing to, I would say he's playing two expectations he's not exactly lighting up the game at the moment so I'm pretty happy that that instruction to keep Garbert in a support role has shut Sisto up has, that instruction has helped to shut him up oh bro oh my goodness me oh my oh gracious thank you Brighton Moreno, who has not been playing this whole season um, in favor of Perkovic, well, he has somehow managed to put the ball between the legs of the keeper and scores. Okay, we're going to make a substitution now. It's time to take Silvio off. I am um, concerned if uh, we'll bring Nato on. He's a youngster. Let's just give him some game time. I still want to keep Jamal Tran off the game because we have this big game against Chelsea coming in the FA Cup. I'm sure they'll want revenge because we just, you know, used our youngsters and smashed them. 2-0. Um, the last game, the boys are doing really well. There's no need to make any changes. Do they are they are playing defensively? So the one of the reasons why I went wide is to encourage more play from the flanks. And stretch the uh, fullbacks apart. You know, keep their. They're playing with a DM at the moment. So if I go wide, um, I'm going to stretch their fullbacks, and that leaves uh, pockets of space that we can exploit in and around the DMs area. So, as you can see, Chris has got lots of space to make a pass to Gauch. You know, Nathan. Oh my bloody! He misses. Normally, he scores from the, that kind of a position, but yeah, okay. Slavchev, he's got a he's got a rocket of a shot from outside the box. Old player as well. Oh, Boyer is off, but Nato, the youngster, does well in and repays the faith I had in him. Two 0 This is gonna make it 20, 251 games unbeaten. We have another forty nine games to go. I seriously doubt I'll make that. Um, record 
I, I seriously doubt we're gonna gonna do that um i seriously doubt i can break my 300 there's no way that's gonna happen i'm just enjoying the moment as long i'm gonna milk i'm gonna milk this moment for as long as i can i don't think we'll ever hit 300 i'm, I'm just gonna milk this um, run for as long as i can and then when the day comes you know we will uh, i'll just put anyone up for gauchino i need him off the day will come when i lose and when that day happens yeah Oh, what a take from Moreno. My players are getting jaded. I'm probably going to give them a rest um, for the next game against Chelsea. We've had quite a few fixtures at this point in time. So there's no 68%. That's a, quite a drop for our friend Mixiraka as a fullback. Salas, Lucas Ramuro's replacement has done really well. They've done well with Brom. I mean, I did expect them to win. Um, nothing. There's nothing too shocking about this win. We did play wide because uh, I'm gonna stretch the, the de defensive formation apart. Possession. We literally went to Brighton's home and just set up shop. Well, that's six. 251 games now can we make it 252 time for me to go to my training oh god I got to give them a bit more rest okay so here we go we have done the quintuple I have elected to give my team an extra day off from training because if you look at my schedule, <laughs> I'm just asking for trouble. I'm playing Chelsea in less than three days. Then three days later, I play Porto. <laughs> then four days later, you know, we play Stoke. And then four days after that, we play QPR. And three days after that, we play Wigan. Oh my God. This whole stretch is just... just um, there are going to be a few banana peels between uh, the match between Chelsea and Manchester United. We are playing five matches in 14 days. Five games in 14 days. Who comes up with these fixtures? So, let's skim through this. Pinola asks, Pinada, come on Pinada, what's wrong with you? I know you only see me as a backup player, but I feel my career is stagnating given my lack of game time. I think I deserve a chance to show you what I can do with a spell in the first team. I understand that you want to play regularly, but Lucas Romero is the number one choice. Shut up and sit down. Okay, boss. Alright, it's the big one. Chelsea against West Brom with Albion. Chelsea are second in the table miles behind the title winners Chelsea will be looking for revenge after the League Cup final loss my team is a sad team okay let's continue all right oh if I we have some selection issues at the moment because Romero is out suspended Marko Marco Perkovic is um, injured and so is our so is our first choice defender Silvio Chelsea, West Brom, away. Let's see how they line up. Chelsea are going to be playing wide with Oscar and Grealish. They still, they still pose a formidable threat. I will tell Robledo to play as a fullback on support. And this guy to play as a fullback on support. Instructions will be not to play wider or narrow, we'll just play the same way and see how this goes. We could lose. Could be off could this be our first defeat? Do the boys are the boys gonna get complacent? Only time will tell. I was a bit concerned in the last game because you has conditioning conditioning dropped like a rock towards the end of the game. Nathan with the corner. Oh, I forgot to do the set pieces again. I wanted to modify my set pieces because we haven't really been scoring a lot from set pieces, so I wanted to change things around. 
Now Robledo. Good concentration from him. Who was the guy playing with him? Mixuraka. Moreno playing the ball to Salas. Pinata now. He finds Cochino. Cochino looks up, finds Nathan. Plays it back to Pinata. Pinata is fi finds Salas. Salas and Pinata, they're combining with. There's no hurry for us to try and score a goal. Oh, every time Chelsea break, I get worried. Salas with the foul. He's going into the book. No, he's not. It's a good thing that I put those guys on support. You, as you see, um, they are pretty strong on the flanks. If I hadn't put them on support, I would have issues. Oh, Delgado almost scores. We still have. A, we still are doing better in terms of possession, but we haven't really made any chances of note. Chelsea missing a clear-cut chance inside the first 20 minutes of the game. Nathan again with a corner. Murillo. Did I... Do I need to change my set pieces? No, I don't. Murillo has now put us into the lead. It's gonna be 2-5-2. Yes! Please, God, let it be 2-5-2. These are the guys... Chelsea is the one team I'm worried about. In the league right now, there are two clubs that always give me a headache. One of them is Chelsea, the other one is Man City. I don't know why, but it seems like these two guys are hard-coded to give me a headache. Christie, come on my captain or my captain. Oh! Couldn't find the pass. Nathan now with the ball, Gauchino. Oh, nice movement, Nate. Gauchino. Oh, come on. Oh, should have put the ball in the back under it. Nathan picks up the loose ball finds Moreno Moreno Salas Piñata Gauchino oh come on Gauchino Salas again doing well in the air he's already picked up a, he's already picked up a card and it's only the what the first 30 minutes Gauchino makes it two. Come on, Miss Boom, come on. I gotta start learning some West Brom songs and you know play them back as they score these goals. Oh nice leader from Gauchino beating his man and finding space. Moving into the channel. Moreno is 77%. I am a bit worried about my players' match conditioning considering the demands of playing uh, 5 games in 14 days. Robledo with his... So, yes. Come on, Moreno. And he makes it 3. Moreno makes it 3. Thank you, Moreno. This was an excellent piece of work. A lot of one-touch passing inside the penalty box. This is the hallmark of the 4-3-1-2. Okay, I'm going to tell my players I'm very happy with the way they are doing. And uh, I'm going to start looking out for people, players who might not last. Moreno is at 77%. It's a bit of a concern considering the fact that I only have him left as a striker watch him and then if needed I'm gonna push Nathan up into the F9 position and bring on Matt Hadrill. In his own way he can play that position pretty well. Okay. No. Don't you dare score. And launch a famous, you know, football manager comeback.
Delgado is playing wide now. He is he is the F forward. Salas has me a bit worried at the moment because he can't really tackle and he's playing as a DLP. I may need to bring on somebody who can tackle and take those kind of chances. So we are going to look at Martin Silhavi. He's got anticipation 13, tackling 13, not that fantastic as a tackler. Pinola is now picked up in injury. This is beginning to make me a bit concerned because I need Pinola fit as well. But who do I bring off? Do I run the risk of playing Salas? Okay. I don't know what to do. So we've got a tactics overview. Alright, we'll tell Salas to take it easy and have a Kit Kat. Okay, while we well, we bring Christig up here and bring on um, Martin Sohavi. Because I need Pinata fit for the game in the Champions League. Oh, we could have made it four guys. Uh, Moreno looks like his conditioning is dropping as well. Corner now from Chelsea. Oh, and Cutipo. Cutipo. Cutipoff. What kind of a name is Ruslan Cutipoff? He scores. Well, it's off a corner. I'm not worried. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> not making major changes. How the hell did Chelsea get 11, goal, 11 shots on goal suddenly? I'm not gonna be worried about Chelsea at the moment. Silhavi, or to Nathan, what a pass! Oh my goodness, what a pass from Silhavi! We've already made one change. Look at that pass from Silhavi. Finds Nathan, the Balloon Dior winner. Okay, who do I bring on? Okay, I just leave to let the game run now. 86 minutes. Nathan makes it two. Second goal of the game for Nathan. 5 1. What a hammering. And there I was at the start of the game thinking that we were gonna lose. I'm stoked. I reckon the change early in the game where I put my fullbacks on support, knowing fully well that Chelsea might have a strong attack from down the flanks. So we went and furthermore, we also decided um, not to play narrow in this game. Definitely is one of those moments that I relish in the game where you're, you're lucky. <laughs> you make some lucky guesses, I guess. Ah, oh, nothing sweeter than beating Chelsea 5 1. We had just been crowned champions, and my biggest worry complacency. The boys didn't get complacent. They proved how good they are at the end of the day. And the fans are happy after this result. He'll be out for four to five days. That's okay. This is rumored that Nathan, well, I'm pleased he's playing very well. Just how pleased is absolutely superb. And guys, who would have thought that we'd kick Chelsea out of the FA Cup with such conviction? Well, that is 252 games without loss. Can this run keep going? I don't know. 
join me again on Buster Net. Thank you for watching this rather long video. If you did enjoy it or any of the other shows that I've put up, please subscribe, drop me a comment on Twitter or on my blog, and I hope to catch you again soon. Goodbye.